So occasionally I like doing videos like this where I just round up really interesting things that have been happening in the community, so new tutorials and add-ons and all sorts of other stuff. I just put them into one big video for you to enjoy. So of course links for everything will be down in the description and let's get into it. So first of all we have the Node minimap add-on which I've really been enjoying. If you've been watching any of my videos over the last couple of months you might have seen this hidden away inside of those. So basically it just adds this lovely little map in the corner of your node trees and you can click on it and move around. It basically means that you will never be lost in your node trees ever again. I think the vision style is really clean, really interesting. And to be honest, it feels like it should be a feature that should be in Blender by default anyway. So it's just something I have on all the time now. Whenever I used to get lost in my node trees, I used to have to press A twice to like select all of the nodes and then press the period key on the numpad to focus the view back onto them. But now I don't need to do that anymore. I can just click straight on the minimap and boom, there you are. And it's really customizable as well, because if you go to the tools tab in the shader editor window end menu, then you'll find a bunch of parameters to control how it looks. So there's like width and height values you can choose whether you want it to be on the top or the bottom. You can even select how many nested node trees to view. So I just think it's a really nice and well-made feature. By default, it's set up so you can use the middle mouse button to interact with the map, but you can change that as well because I really wanted to use the left mouse button and I was quite happy to find that in the add-on preferences, they actually have that as an option. So five stars from me. Thank you very much for the node minimap add-on and I will leave my affiliate link down below if you're interested in picking that up. The next thing I want to share is a lovely video by Wilson, who's a really nice guy. He's been interacting with my community a lot recently and it's called the five biggest mistakes of a beginner 3D artist. And it basically just talks about a lot of the pitfalls that people fall into when they start doing 3D art, things like maintaining good balance of detail in a scene and having a consistent scale and other things like that. One of the things I like about the video in particular is it's got this really nice animated presentation style, which I think added to the quality. And I really like videos like this, so I think it's worth giving it a watch. It also doesn't have too many views and I feel like I've fallen behind on my quota of sharing smaller channels recently. So especially if you're a new 3D artist and you want to avoid some of the mistakes that some of us older learners made, then maybe give it a watch. All right, the next thing that I think a lot of people will really appreciate is, do you remember at the end of last year, I did a video about the Creative Shrimp Photogrammetry course done by Gleb Alexandrov and Adi Burrows? Well, in that course, they had a section which was just about doing photogrammetry using completely free software. So Blender and Meshroom and Darktable and other stuff like that. Well, that free workflow, Gleb has decided to release on his YouTube channel. So it's now available for everyone to watch. So there's a new one hour video over there going over the entire workflow of how to make high quality photogrammetry content content using completely free software. So if you've always wanted to learn how to do that, then now's the time to give it a try. So I'll leave a couple of links below. I'll leave a link to the new video and my affiliate link for the photogrammetry course. So the next thing on my list is there's a new SSGI build available for Blender 3.1, and this is available on the graphical website. So SSGI, of course, means screen space global illumination, which is basically a way of just faking bounce lighting in a scene by using the camera data. This has been very important for the EV rasterization engine in Blender because bounce lighting is something that's sorely missing when compared compared to path traced engines like Cycles. So it adds a whole new layer of realism. Now SSGI for EV has been available as an add-on on Gumroad already, but now you can access it as a Blender 3.1 build. So if you're interested in that, then you can take a look. So the next two things I wanna share are a couple of videos from a good friend of mine, Kev Binge, who used to be known as Blender Binge, but someone took his old name after he changed to Kev Binge. So don't be too confused, just look for Kev Binge now. Anyway, the two videos are, underwater environments are tricky in Blender, but less so now, and super easy aerial crop landscapes, Blender 3.0, no geometry nodes. So the underwater video is only about five minutes long, and that's something that you'll find consistent about these videos is that Kev likes to keep things nice and concise. It contains a lot of information, especially about things to keep in mind in regards to color and visibility underwater, things that artists might neglect to keep in mind when making these kinds of scenes. In that video, they essentially provide a breakdown of how they made their underwater scene, going over things like displacing meshes with textures, creating the volume and adjusting the anisotropy to get the values right, using more textures to enhance the visual grime of the scene and creating the water plane above. Part systems for animating debris floating around in the water, as well as doing post-processing in DaVinci Resolve. And extra information about the process as well as other content can be found on their Patreon as well. So the other video was the Aerial Crop Circles tutorial, and this was quite an interesting one as well. He shares an interesting web resource for getting CC0 SVG files from the web. So these are things you can use in any of your projects because they're essentially public domain. There was also a really interesting technique in there about using a wood texture for getting a crop field, which I never really thought was possible, but he seemed to make it work. And then he also shows how to use a text to restrict the influence of the particle system to get the crop circle effect. I just thought it was quite an interesting example because, you know, we see a lot of the same types of stuff made in video tutorials over and over again in Blender. I don't think I've seen anyone do crop circles before. I mean, I might have seen a couple, but you know, points for originality. So the next thing is a young community member of mine has made a really impressive fan Warhammer animation. Their channel name is Sir Floof, and I believe I've recommended them once or twice on the channel before. I think what he's managed to achieve by himself is really admirable considering that he lives out at sea and doesn't always have access to the internet 
internet, so I just think that's really cool. If you like the Warhammer universe and you're interested in fan animations like this, then it's definitely worth giving a watch. I always find it impressive people that can commit to making short animation projects because they are very difficult to put together. But I know that Games Workshop has a history for closing down fan projects, so if they decide to try and close down this innocent teenager's fan project, then I will personally send them a very strongly worded letter telling them to go and step on Legos, barefoot. So Martin Kleckner, the surprisingly attractive guy behind the Master 3D environments in Blender course for CG Boost, has added a new section all about grasslands, and he shows you how to get these beautiful grassland effects by using geometry nodes. Now obviously I can give you my highest recommendation for this course because as you may know if you've been following for a while, I'm a huge fan of CG Boost content. I think they're just some of the nicest creators in the Blender community space, and I really appreciate what they do. So I'll leave my affiliate links down below as well. So the next thing, Kevin from Kevin Dram, Ke Kevin Dram, Ke Kevin Dram. Look, I always get these wrong I'm sorry it's my fault but it's a really beautiful channel you should really check it out but he's just put out a new tutorial well it's kind of new the 15th of January all about grease pencil and how to create this really nice looking bakery using grease pencil in blender also I just really love the way he speaks like his voice is really calming so I mean just listen to this I invite you to add more details using the techniques we discuss like a lamp post or roofing but I'll leave that up to you to to me <laughs> Anyway, another creator I like is Render Rides, and he's done a bunch of really interesting tutorials before. One of the things I like about him in particular is he has a unique editing style. Also, his visuals are always like really nice and very pretty, but he did a really sentimental video recently, which was turning my childhood memory into a 3D animation. And I think that along with his unique editing style, he's also got a really good knack for storytelling, and it's a unique approach on making these kinds of videos. The only thing is I feel like he deserves a lot more attention for his content. I also think he's at a stage in his life, like a lot of people, where it's kind of difficult to figure out exactly what you want to do. So I hope he just keeps making content and he's going to watch this anyway. Hi, Agniv. <laughs> yeah, keep it up, buddy. I mean, don't force yourself to if you don't want to, but like, I really like it. It's nice stuff. And the last four things are all videos from the same person who, again, someone I really like and who deserves a lot of attention. Ben BBBN19. Someone I've recommended so many times because his content is excellent. I mean, if you've seen his Twitter account, it's like, I don't... I don't understand, like amazing. His mind is amazing. His creativity is fantastic. And I was pushing him so hard for so long to like make a Gumroad account and then to make a YouTube channel and he's done it and the content's fantastic. And I speak to him in private semi-frequently as well about the things he wants to make and you know, his approach to making content. And he's just, he's such a genuine person. I really want him to do well. So four of his new videos I really want to recommend are the how to make a DVD bouncing effect. This was a really interesting one and it's come after CG Matter made a bunch of videos about the same thing. So this DVD bouncing effect became a bit of a running joke and before he put the video out he's a bit worried that CG Matter might take it the wrong way like oh I'm gonna do a better version of it but I told him not to worry about it I mean CG Matter's got a unique sense of humor and as his official PR manager I'm not really his official PR manager it's just a running joke I can assure you that he doesn't mind hello Wendy <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is Easy Caustics in Blender. This was a really interesting one as well. The thing about this video is that even though it's packed full of interesting information for getting a caustics effect, the thing that really catches my eye is just a really satisfying fish animation. I could watch that for hours. It is such a beautiful fish. I love it so much. The next video is Create Easy Hexagon Grids in Blender 3.0 Geometry Nodes. For some reason, hexagons are like super popular, like one of the most popular patterns. But then again, Geometry Nodes is such a popular feature nowadays, and all this content is really going to help you to enhance your understanding of it. And the last one is How to Make Glowy Asteroids in Blender. I love the look of this one. I think I'm probably going to end up using this kind of effect for some of my own artwork in the future. So yes, I have to give that one a recommendation. He has a really good way of explaining things. He's kind of nice and calm and, you know, just goes through it methodically as well. So yeah, go and show him some love. So yeah, that's it for the recommendations this time. Hopefully you found some of this useful and interesting. Make sure to leave a comment below if there's anything else you want to share that's been going on in the community because I can't keep my eyes on everything. But of course, don't go too hard on the self-promotion. You know, no one likes a self-promoter. Anyway, self-promotion time. Check out my second channel if you like discussion videos. <laughs> I've been starting to gear up on there a bit more and I'm going to start doing a series about reviewing people's artworks and portfolios because that's something that's always quite fun. And I've started putting a few discussion points in there as well. So we had one video which was, is modularity the key to productivity? And then uh, why you should take part in art challenges, some important points and reasons it can be beneficial. I have a video about the intelligence barrier coming up, which is the invisible thing that you put in front of you to stop yourself from learning new skills, like programming, for example. So if you're interested in some more cognitive content like that, then maybe check the channel out. We're also running an art challenge on my server at the moment. So the theme for this one is triangular. It can be anything you like, like a triangular spaceship or like a triangular iris for an eye or just interpret it in any way you like. This is a self-improvement challenge, so there are no rewards, but I might do rewards one 
in the future. And the deadline for that is the 8th of February. You can check out my store page at curtisholder.online forward slash store for add-ons and resources. There's a lot of free stuff on there and some really cool paid resources, in particular my new procedural patterns pack, which I just did a video about, to help you make more complex materials. Um, yes, the first paid pack for Biogen is still coming, it's just taking a while to put together. And if you remember a while ago, I did a video about designing my new studio. Well, I'm not there yet, but we're picking up the keys to the house soon, so that project is still going ahead, it's just taking a while. So I've been doing a thing recently where if people make it to the end of the video, I ask them to put an emoji in the comments just so I know that they've made it this far. So for this video, we're going to do a monkey. So much love to all of you, have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.